most soils have a cation exchange capacity, which is the ability to retain and supply positively charged plant nutrients through iron exchange processes. In this scenario, the soil particles have negative charges, which attract positively charged ions such as ammonium, potassium and magnesium. If a soil is acidic, these negatively charged particles may also attract aluminium and hydrogen ions, which further exacerbates soil acidity issues. Positively charged ions are termed cations. As cation exchange capacity increases, more nutrients are attached to soil particles and fewer remain in the soil solution. One reason that highly weathered soils in southwest Western Australia, including gravel soil, are so different from other soil types is that they also possess anion exchange capacity. This is where the soil becomes positively charged and instead attracts negatively charged ions like phosphates, nitrates, sulfates and chlorides. Anion exchange capacity is increased as soil becomes more acidic. In southwest Western Australia, ironstone gravel soil, both the fine soil fraction, which is less than 2 mm in size, and the gravels themselves have anion exchange capacity. Minerals that exhibit anion exchange capacity include highly weathered kaolinite, aluminium and iron oxides all of which are present in ironstone gravel soils. Gravel structure often includes a metal oxide-rich core containing aluminium and iron minerals and a more porous weathered rind. The dominant minerals here tend to be aluminium minerals such as kaolinite and girthite. Kaolinite has a high anion exchange capacity for a clay but girthite in particular is able to attract a lot of phosphorus because its iron oxide groups are spread over the whole surface of the mineral, whereas the aluminium oxide surfaces in kaolinite are only present on the edges of the mineral structure. Ironstone gravel often contains cracks and pores that reach the internal core of the gravel. Despite this, for negatively charged nutrients such as phosphate and nitrate, the majority of retention appears to happen on the gravel surface. Gravel also has higher capacity to retain nutrients such as phosphorus compared to the fine soil fraction, despite making up less than 1% of the surface area available for nutrient binding. However, Successive inputs of phosphorus fertiliser can eventually saturate the available binding sites, reducing phosphorus retention over time. How many binding sites there are, and how saturated they already are, depends on the chemical composition of the ironstone gravel in combination with the historical management of the site. For positively charged ions, however, the opposite seems to be true. Nitrogen in the form of ammonium has been traced moving into and out of pores and cracks in the gravel, likely with water movement, sometimes becoming stuck when the soil dries out. If cation exchange capacity of soil is measured alone, it can overestimate the capacity of the soil to hold nutrients, as anion exchange capacity counteracts some of the action of cation exchange capacity which isn't immediately obvious from soil testing results. Soil testing needs to consider both cation and anion exchange capacity to get the full picture.